Okay, so here we are in a program called FaceGen Modeler, and what this program allows us to do is it allows us to take any images of a person and export a pretty realistic 3D model of their head just from those images. Um, so I don't believe this is free, I think it's somewhere around 300 bucks. Um, but there is a free version which allows you to export it and do everything with it just with a watermark on the face texture. So all, if all you need is the um, mesh, then that's totally fine. If you don't care about a watermark, um, again, I mean, you can use it. Um, but I did buy the paid version because I use this quite a lot, actually. Anyways, so um, here we are, and today I'm going to show you how to take a face and put it into a 3D model. So let's go over here into the photo fit tab and now we're going to need um, at least one front facing image of the person and then optionally a left and right profile. So here I'm going to have three and uh, who better to use if you're going to steal a face um, than Nicolas Cage. So here we go, we can load in the front and the left profile and the right profile. Okay, and now we're going to want to click on next. So, now we just want to align these as best as we can. So you can see that we have the eyes, and we have the cheekbones, and we have the nose and all this stuff. And this isn't actually the refined state. This is just, um, I think it does this, then you can later zoom in to the, uh, to the size that it wants. So I'm just going to place all these, and I will get back to you when I'm done. Okay, now that I'm done with the um, first profile, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them. Okay, and now that we are done with those, we're just going to click on next. Um, yes, we want to preserve the facial hair and the texture. And we do want to use um, a detailed texture from the side photos. Um, I mean, I guess... Click on these. If they don't work, then try it again and just kind of fiddle around with it till you get the result you want. But in this case, I do want both these checked. So now we're just going to click on Start Now and wait for it to process. Cool. That was not too bad. Um, but yet again, I do have a pretty powerful computer. But still, probably less than one or two minutes. And now you can see here, um, we have a pretty good looking model. Um, it, it's, of course, not perfect, but it really is pretty good. And uh, you can see that the nose matches up with the nose and all the textures are good. Um, one thing you may want to do is to play around with the detail of the textures. So you can see as we bring that down, it brings down the finer details. Um, and then up here, you can really make it a lot more detailed if you want. Um, and this is a lot more up to preference. If you're doing it more professionally, you may want to bring up the detail if you're doing like a game texture. Um, it may look a little bit weird to have all of the high-level detail, and it may not come over, um, tra transfer over the game fully. Um, last thing is this gamma correction. Um, we can control kind of like the skin tone and the overall brightness of the face. Um, and I think somewhere around here looks a little bit more natural. Okay, now the last thing we're going to want to do is go up here to File and click on Export. Um, now there are lots of different file formats we could use. Um, STL, Wavefront, Lightwave, Softimage, a bunch of different stuff. Um, I found that I've had problems with textures and um, lots of different models and all that kind of stuff when I don't use Wavefront or OBJ. Um, so let's just save this as cage.obj and now it's going to come up with um, image texture type. Let's choose JPEG in full size. Um, and model select. So current expression, it just means that however the face looks right now in the preview over here, that's exactly what we're going to get. Neutral expression and animation targets basically morphs this photo into a bunch of different um, animation, basically shape keys um, of what this face will look like when it's sad or happy or angry or with his left eyebrow raised and right eyebrow raised. Um, it'll give you a bunch of different models for every different expression. We don't want that right now. I mean, if you want that, click on that, but I just want the current expression because I just want one model to load into Blender. Okay, let's click on OK here and it exported. So now let's go into Blender. So let's go ahead and delete the default cube and go up here, file and import. Um, we saved it as an OBJ. So there are actually two OBJ importers, the experimental one and the normal one. Um, I found that the experimental one actually helps the textures stick a little bit more and it finds it on the first try. But I mean, whichever one works for you. Uh, so let's click on that and find cage.obj and import it. 
Um, now that imports it, but it is freaking ginormous. So let's scale this down a little bit to the right size. Um, if you really wanted to get scientific about it, we can click on N here and open up the dimensions. And you can see that his face is four meters wide, which is not accurate. So if you wanted to actually scale it um, to the right size, you could do that. But something like that looks good to me. Um, and now let's rotate it around the x-axis just so it's a slightly better angle. And just like that, you can see that the head got imported um, with the textures and with the correct... Um, but with the correct mesh and everything. One last thing we could do if we wanted is to go into the shading tab and edit this. Um, so you can see that currently it has a set roughness and all that stuff. Um, but you can really control this in whatever way you want. Um, by default, it plugs it into a principal BSDF, which I think is kind of smart because then it um, reacts to lighting and all that stuff. But um, you really have the option to do whatever you want with this now. So we could up the subsurf. Um, and if we turned on cycles here... Um, and go into GPU, you can see it actually starts to look a little bit more lifelike as we up the subsurf amount. You can also add in a noise modifier and plug that into the normal to make it look a little bit more like skin. There's a lots of different options you can do, but you can see the main part of the tutorial is getting this Nicolas Cage face directly into my Blender scene, um, having it react to light with the right textures and all that stuff, and now it is up to your creative freedom to do whatever you want with it. Okay, so I hope that this tutorial helped you. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I will do my best to respond to it as soon as possible. And other than that, um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.